My name is Kevin Carhill. I'm a reporter. I've been various other things, but I've written three very large books on land ownership. The first was about uh, who owns land in Britain and uh, to a lesser extent Ireland. The second one was the key one because it's about Australia and New Zealand and the Crown's holdings. Uh, And the third book was who owns land in Ireland. Kevin, we've had a big hoo-ha last week with the King visiting Australia and uh, being being heckled by the Aboriginals, actually referring to the <clears throat> historical genocide. But also, of course, there's a hint here by the Aboriginals about the genocide going on now in one of Britain's old colonies uh, called Palestine. So so what do you make of the what well, I mean, how much power does Charles really have over there and how much land does he still have? Because we think of Australia as being pretty much independent nowadays. Yeah. No, in the old fashioned legal sense, he is the superior landholder for all land in Australia, including the Antarctic, the Antarctic territories. So he is the feudal superior. And he is the ultimate owner of all land in Australia. Now, his effective power depends entirely on the extent to which the Australian state enforces his uh, legal rights. And by and large, the the Australian government does enforce King Charles's rights. It claims all all of Antarctica in his name, and it uh, repeats his claim to be the superior, the feudal superior owner of all that, all kind of transactions in land by the state are done in his name. Now, we've just had the succession, the coronation with the Queen dying, etc. And various estimates put his wealth uh, around about, uh, well, something like a billion pounds, uh, which has been transferred from his mum to him with no inheritance tax. So that's a little bit controversial in itself. But it sounds to me like he's got power and control over land, which isn't included in that amount. So how much do you think he's really worth? And in the editions of the Sunday Times Rich List, where I was the kind of uh, royal wealth reporter, we put the Queen's wealth at about seven or eight billion Charles has a, well, now his uh, son, Prince William, has a kind of private holding, the Duchy of Cornwall, where, in effect, all land in Cornwall is a kind of private possession. However, well, hang on, because we've got uh, Duchy estates here in Wiltshire and in Somerset, too. So it's not just Cornwall, is it? No, they have land in London. They're the the Duchy of Cornwall has land all over the place, a big lump of uh, Dartmoor and all around the Oval in London, but it owns other stuff as well. But the big and nobody noticed it. I mean, I mentioned it at the time. The coalition government in 2010 formalised the sovereign's ownership of the Crown estate. And the Crown estate is worth tens, tens of billions. Oxford Street, uh, in Whitehall. The land is worth a fortune, but it was made the legal possession of the Crown by the coalition government of David Cameron and Clegg. Uh, now, we've got this programme coming up on Saturday evening on Dispatches. And I was quite amused to see that there is some sort of legal action rumoured by the royal family to um, to stop the programme, which is looking deeply at the secret hidden wealth of the royal family. And of course, it's ironic, isn't it, that uh, although they're recommended by ministers, that actually Charles himself now and previously the Queen does finalise the appointments of the judges. So it's almost as if he's getting his 
judges to make a decision about whether or not this program can take place or not, Kevin. But anyway, what what do you you know if you were to sort of be advising those people looking at this program about the secret wealth, whereabouts do you think we might be expected to find hidden wealth by the royals at the moment? First of all, most of it isn't recorded properly in the land registry. They haven't completed registration. Most of it, you have to go through newspaper cuttings and that sort of stuff the way I did long ago. And of course, there's Tony Hall's book on the royal wealth which has never been uh, republished. And he had a good stab at it. But the basic thing is, uh, Charles is head of state. And it's completely anomalous that the assets of the head of state are not disclosed. The Guardian has covered it fairly well. The hidden approaches to Parliament behind the scenes, lobbying. This is Rob Evans, isn't he? He's done a fantastic job over the years, the black spider letters and this sort of thing. But do do you think um, the I mean, how much power does the king have? I noticed last Remembrance Sunday, the king going in with the then prime minister, Rishi Sunak and the former prime minister, David Cameron, for lunch after the ceremony. They've got a big door. They go from the cenotaph into the foreign office. And the next morning it was announced that David Cameron was going to be the foreign secretary a very surprise announcement well it wasn't such a surprise if you see the uh, the lunch that was taking place in there so i wonder how much power charles really does have over these appointments things like army officers things like chief constables actually even ministers have to be approved by the crown yeah absolutely i mean my commission when i was in the army came from the queen under it was a rubber stamp but it was her signature I was her officer. I was not an officer of the country. I was, if you like, commissioned as her lieutenant, not as a lieutenant in the army of the United Kingdom. 